The city of Elgin is in shock and despair today, and I can confirm that he has damaged the cruciate ligaments in his left knee, and he will miss the rest of the season. And just when you think that things are looking comfortable and you're doing really well, FM says, oh no you don't, and gets its revenge. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to The Road to Glory, Part 30, Season 4, here at Elgin City. And if you are new to the channel and you like this kind of content and you like a little bit more of an in-depth tactical analysis, then you're in the right place. So why not subscribe, like, watch and comment, help the channel to grow and help us support that very good cause that you can see scrolling above up there. And so far in the season, things have been going very well and we are sitting in second place. And after 10 games, we have 20 points. But FM have decided that we are not going to be comfortable anymore. And I can confirm that Joey Dawson has injured his cruciate ligaments in his left knee. And he is going to be out for at least seven months maybe more like 11 months or a year, given the quality of the specialists we can afford and the medical team that we have here. And I suspect it's more likely to be 11 months. I don't see him coming back until probably midway through pre-season next season. And I'm thinking that it's probably the end of his career. And as you can see, his bravery has already suffered and he has already gone down two points in his bravery and the rest of the attributes are sure to follow. And so it was a bitter blow for us with Joey Dawson out of the team, our key player, and really now struggling up front. We don't have any forwards who can replace him at the moment. I set about looking for a replacement and chased every Scottish forward that I could and tried to loan them, but they all rejected me. So while the rest of the city was in shock, I then got to work and I called Malas Pina into my office and I asked him if he could recommend anyone that he knew that would like to come and play a couple of games for Elgin City. And he came up with a very decent suggestion. And he recommended Luca Mast Martinazzi. And I remembered the name. And uh, if we look at his history, um, you can see he was the person that we actually tried to sign on a free in the summer. And he then decided that he wanted to go to Monza in Italy rather than Elgin. And unfortunately though at Monza he hasn't played a single game this season. So I then approached Monza to try and get him to Elgin on a loan. And they agreed. Surprisingly they agreed. And so he has agreed also to come to Elgin City. And in terms of his attributes, he's an absolutely fabulous forward for 19 years of age. And I don't know why he's not playing at Monza, but he certainly will be playing at Elgin City. And he has dribbling skills, good finishing, he's got good technique, good off the ball and flair. He looks like a, a physicals are good, he's got great pace, he looks like an absolutely brilliant forward and I think he will be an international forward of the future. And then after we had been through everything to get him here on loan, we found that his work permit had been rejected. But I thought, no, let's peel against that. Something's got to give here. And then three days later, we got the news that the decision had been overturned and that they had granted him a work permit. And now we are in a position where if I click this button, Martin Arzi will move on loan to Elgin City, but he will not arrive until January the 1st, which is still a long way away. But after Christmas, we will have a great player and I will just go and accept this loan deal. And now Martin Arzi, this great forward who I believe is going to be an international forward of the future, he will be coming to Elgin. And part two of the Italian job has now been set up. And we do have Martinazzi joining Malaspina here at Elgin. 
And this has been great news. And on the pitch, we are doing a fabulous job, even better than I could have ever imagined. And we're sitting in second in the table, three points behind Hamilton. And when you were last here, you saw us have that 2-2 draw against Kilmarnock. And then we went on to beat Wraith Rovers by three goals to nil at home, and then had a 2-0 victory away at Air United. That was followed by a cup game in the Challenge Cup third round. We played our reserve team and we were very fortunate to get a nil-nil draw, which we then won on penalties. And we followed that with a 2-1 victory against Queen of the South. We've already worked out how to play Queen of the South and it worked again. And this was the game that Joey Dawson got injured and gave us this enormous headache. And then we had a home 1-0 defeat against Hamilton and we really were the better team in this game and we totally outplayed them. We had 13 shots, seven on target. They only had four, two on target and we totally dominated the possession as well. Hamilton only having 35% of the possession. We totally should have won this game but we didn't and it was a goal from a set piece that decided the match and so it was an unfortunate defeat but we still remain optimistic and today we have a very, very difficult game and we will be playing Ross County who are sitting in third and they are very, very dangerous opposition and we need to set up very well against Ross County today. But before we turn our attention to this game with Ross County, there is the little matter of goal of the session. And in the last episode, Sam Bowen was voted as the winning goal. And so here are the goals for this current session. So get voting. Let's see who is goal of the session this time. I know which one I like, but I'm wondering will there be sympathy votes for Joey Dawson? But now is the time to go and focus on Ross County. And they are in third place at the moment. After 10 games, they are four points behind us and their form is a little bit patchy to say the least. And they have had just two victories sandwiched in between four draws, which means they have not lost. And so they are still going to be a very, very dangerous opponent. And so let's have a look at what we have found out about them. Well, we do know that they like to play in a 4-4-2. And Danda is an inverted winger and Hoskins is a natural winger. So one is going to be looking to go outside and the other will be looking to come inside. Burrows is an interesting character. He is an inverted wing back and he tends to end up in this kind of position. And so we might find that there's space on the right hand side behind Burrows and so it's something that we should be perhaps looking to exploit in terms of our own goal scoring chances. But we also need to have a look at how we're going to stop them playing in the way that they want to play and how we are going to try and make them play in a way that they don't want to. So if we take this game that they had recently where they beat Hamilton away by three goals to two and we go to the analytical data which hopefully will load very shortly here it comes then we can pretty much see that they focus most of their attacks down the left-hand side. 52%, in fact, of their attacking movement went down 
the left hand side so it's a clear indication that they are going to be very strong in that area and then if we have a look at the past combinations you can see that they are very strong down here on the left and they are going to try to work the ball down the left hand side of the field but if we look a little bit more we can see that they're actually quite strong on the right hand side of the field and they might surprise a few teams who are focusing on the left hand side of the field by going down the right and we need to stop the ball I think getting to their key player Robbie Blackburn and so that will mean keeping a very close eye on Hoskins and Callum Johnson as well. We need, therefore, there's five players I can see that we need to focus on, and we need to make sure that these, this area of the pitch is well marshaled and that we are closing down these two boys and making sure that they cannot get passes away in the way that they want to. And I think also because a lot of the stuff goes through this midfield, we need to tight mark these two boys and try to take them out of the game. And I think that would be the game plan today and and hopefully we can use that and the fact that the left back tends to end up in positions such as this that will leave space out wide on the right and then what we will do is instruct Baker Richardson to move into the channels out here and then he hopefully will be able to exploit the space in behind that inverted wing back. We are also going to focus our attacks down the left. We're going to have an attacking fullback and a Mazala out on the left trying to exploit space down here. And we are going to close off the left-hand side of the pitch. We're going to play Bowen as a Carrillero there. And we've got Wilson as a fullback on defend. And hopefully this area of the pitch is going to be completely off limits for them. And we're going to absolutely close them down there, forcing them to play a little bit more up here. And then hopefully we're going to just take out these players and win the game. That is at least is the game plan. Will it work? I think we've got a very strong team. I think it's time now to go and kick some balls. And so there are some things that worry me. I think that the way we're set up could leave space in behind the midfield three, although Whitaker is on a defend duty and hopefully he can fill up that space. But I am worried about whether or not it's right to play positive against them and whether we should play Mundell as an attacking playmaker in a game such as this. I think we have to take the game to them. I feel that it's probably going to be a defeat and both the board and the supporters are saying the same thing. But we're going, not going to be defensive minded. We're going to play with a low block because I think we play better against 4-4-2 with a low block. And hopefully we'll get a result. And a draw is not outside the realms of possibilities. And so the team for today is Hiddleston in goal with Wilson, McKenzie, Malaspina and Dick at the back. Bowen, Whitaker, and Hamilton will play as that midfield trio. Mundell will play as an advanced playmaker ahead of them and then Pasnik and Baker Richardson make up the front two. And so it is time to go and kick some balls and see if we can't get a result here against Ross County. We have lost Joey Dawson, it is a big blow, but I think we still have enough strength in depth to go out and get a result. And just tell them, you've got nothing to lose. So go out there, play as you've been playing, and give everybody a, a big surprise here again. And the game is underway. And it is a very, very quiet start. And Ross County have had the better of the exchanges, as I suspected they might. But so far, they're not creating too many chances. And we do have the hi first highlight. And Paznik with the corner is headed off the line. And we were so unlucky there. And Ross County looked to bring it away, but the highlight comes to an end. So we've had really the better of the game. And in terms of the game overall, it looks like we are in control. If we have a look at the heat map, we're not really controlling this left-hand side of the pitch yet. And there's still a lot of activity going on here. And maybe this is something we need to look at because they still are dominating that left-hand side of the pitch. But we are forcing them over to the right as well. And so far, it's a fairly even game in terms of possession, shots, XG. It's very, very even. But we do have another highlight. And Dick will take the throw. And he finds Pasnik. 
Pasnix had the ball taken off him, but a poor pass finds Whitaker. Whitaker's looking for Mundell. Mundell gets robbed, but Whitaker picks it up again, and he finds Baker Richardson, who fires it into the top corner, and that's got to be a contender for goal of the session next time. What a strike by Richardson. Is he coming into his own? It's Ross County nil, Elgin City one. Are we going to continue to surprise the championship and pull out another result out of the bag? What a strike that was. What a goal. What a player. What a manager. What a day so far. But it could all go wrong as yet. <laughs> we are only 1-0 up. But I'm getting far too excited. This game plan, is it working? As Bowen is over a free kick. We've had the better of the chances. Bowen puts the free kick in and it hits the roof of the net and goes over the bar. We've had the better highlights. I think we're creating the better chances. We've set up, I think, correctly. It's just now whether the roll of the dice goes our way. We are a goal ahead, away at Ross County, and Ross County are struggling to create really decent chances against us. And it is half time, and we are ahead. I'm going to say well done on controlling possession. Keep going, boys. You got this in the bag. If you just keep playing this way, we'll win this game. And this championship lark will start to look very, very easy. And here is Bowen straight from the kickoff. Bowen is driving forward. And that is a ball inside. And we always know that when there's a highlight from the kickoff, the ball will get turned over. And it has got turned over. And here come Ross County. Ross County are looking to play down the right. They're looking for Blackburn. He is the danger man. And we've got to stop the ball getting to him. Johnson's piling down the right. Looks to get a cross in. They have equalised. It's Ross County 1. Elgin City 1. That was poor. We are supposed to be tight marking that fullback and tight marking the right winger, and we didn't do it. And if we, I just need to go and make sure that the instructions are set up properly because that was pretty poor play. And they, we just l allowed them the space where they are dangerous on that right hand side. I'm going to go and have a look if the opposition's instructions are set up properly. And unfortunately they weren't. I forgot to put tight marking on both of them, <laughs> only closing down. And so it's my error that's cost us that goal. And we do need to close that right-hand side down. And so we have instructed the players now to tight mark him. And there's a long ball over the top. Should be picked up by Hiddleston. He's way out of his goal, and that always scares me. Get back into goal. And here is Mackenzie. Mackenzie looking around. Where, looks for Bowen. Bowen finds Wilson. Wilson back to Mackenzie. Playing it around nicely. Let's be patient. Here's Mundell. Mundell, once again, is not having a great game. He's not settled in very well since his arrival. And there's a little ball over the top. Finds Bowen, who has settled very well. Bowen finds Rich. Richardson, Pasnik looking out for Dick on the left. Dick is through. Dick with a strike and it goes just over. And he, had he got the sense to look inside there, we would have been 2-1 up. We're pretty much dominating the game again. It will be a travesty if we don't win this game. But I'll take a point away at Ross County. Remember, we are relegation fodder. And I think possibly now we'll go and have a look if it's time to make some changes. And so we've made a few changes, get some fresh legs on the pitch. Nobody was playing particularly badly, but this is a game that we could easily win, we could easily lose. And it is Ross County. They do have a corner, and there's a header, and it's just been cleared off the line. Blackburn, he is a danger man. We have to stop the ball getting to him. And what has happened there? Oh, Lord, I do not. It's an own goal by Bowen. And I don't know exactly what happened there. The goalkeeper didn't actually move. It was well defended initially from the set piece. Blackburn played it back to Johnson. And this is a lame shot. It trickles. And the goalkeeper didn't actually try for that. <laughs> and I'm a bit disappointed. We've gone 2-1 two one, two one down. And that should not have happened. I'm going to go attacking now because... I don't actually understand what that was about. And we're going to put Gil Hooley on attack as well. We're going to go for it now. We don't deserve to lose this game. It's just one of those unfortunate things. It's another game we've absolutely dominated. 
but the roll of the dice has not gone our way and there's a header from Ross County that goes over the bar. This is so unfortunate. If we have a look at the possession numbers, we have had 60% of the possession. Ethan Hamilton is very tired, apparently. So we'll take him off and bring on Blair Alston. And here is Pasnick. Pasnick is... And is that a penalty? And it's going to be Dingwall to take the penalty. Can you get us level? Can you make it 2-2? This would be absolutely awesome. If you can put this in. Dingwall with the penalty. And it is 2-2. <laughs> We're back in the game. Fully deserve to be back in the game, if you ask me. And we do see that Mackenzie is very tired as well. So maybe, depending on who I've got on the bench... Uh, maybe it's time to... That was a very fortunate penalty. Straight down the middle. And I think we need to have a look at Mackenzie at the moment. And maybe we'll... Yeah, we'll bring on Sean Williams. Um, but I don't want him playing as... I don't want him playing in that role. But I can't change it for the moment. Let's just start the game up again. And then we'll change his role. I want him to be a no-nonsense centre-back on defend. And it looks like the game is coming to an end. And a 2-2 draw away at Ross County is going to be a great result. I will take that. I will say that the game plan worked. And I think we didn't get the result we wanted, but we were underdogs. Let's be happy about a 2-2 draw. We're still in second place. We're still doing a great job here. And hopefully long may this continue. Nice to see Dingwall on the score sheet. And we are doing very, very well. Our form looks good. We need to get a couple of wins under our belts. We've got Kelty Hearts and Falkirk coming up. Those are two winnable games. Hopefully we can get a couple of results under our belt. And we will progress from here. And that's it for this episode. If you are new to the channel, why not subscribe, like, watch and comment. Help us to grow and help us support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling up above. And so from a very, very happy Elgin City, despite the fact that we've lost Joey Dawson, things do not look so bad on the pitch still. And with Dingwall possibly returning to form, who knows what could happen. And so, I will bid you all farewell. Take care, and see you soon.